In this revision video, let's look at a key diagram how you can show some of the welfare gains from trade liberalisation. How can trade liberalisation promote development? Well, liberalisation can be growth enhancing because countries can specialise where they have a comparative advantage. So trade, for example, trade liberalisation policies, including joining the World Trade Organization just under 20 years ago, has helped Vietnam integrate deeply into global supply chains in industries such as electronics and textiles, significantly boosting their exports, their GDP and their per capita incomes. Reducing trade barriers allows low to middle income countries to import advanced machinery and technology and know-how from developed nations. So this approach has really helped the rapid expansion of Bangladesh's garment industry. It's now one of the biggest textile exporters. And trade, liberalisation, open trade agreements can often act as a catalyst to attract foreign direct investment. As multinational and transnational corporations look to capitalise on new market opportunities. FDI has costs and benefits, but some of the benefits are bringing capital technology transfer and managerial expertise and deepening the capital stock in a country, boosting domestic industry and creating jobs. good example there would be Mexico. In the news at the moment, obviously, because of Trump's tariffs, but Mexico has attracted significant FDI in manufacturing over the last two decades. And it really has transformed the country into a major global producer of automobiles, electronics and other manufacturing items. So here's the diagram that you might want to use if you're going to question on trade liberalisation. Let's look at the car industry. Initially, the price is P1 plus T, that's the world supply price, with a tariff. But consider a free trade agreement that eliminates an import tariff. So with trade liberalisation, don't just draw the tariff diagram, it's actually the tariff diagram in reverse. What trade liberalisation does is it brings down average tariff rates and therefore the world supply price falls without a tariff from P1 plus T to P2. Now don't forget to label key areas. The consequences are, first of all, an expansion of domestic demand from Q2 to Q4 because imports are now cheaper. But there's also a downside in the sense that domestic supply may fall from Q1 to Q3 as we move down the domestic supply curve. So the total quantity of imports may well go up to Q3, Q4. And labelling this diagram allows you to talk about the consequences for consumer surplus, for producer surplus and for economic welfare. So this is the diagram to draw showing the effects of trade liberalisation in a market.